Hi everyone, this is me Peter of Gizgay.com and welcome back to another video. As you can see here, we have a new smartphone to unbox and review. This one is called the Techno Pova 2. Techno Pova 2, according to the company, is a device that is good for gaming at this price point. This is also the very first with a 7,000 mAh big battery capacity under 10,000 pesos. Yes guys, it has that massive battery capacity at this price point. So without any further ado, let's begin this review. We are excited. Before we proceed to the unboxing, let's take a look at the full specs of the handset first. As you saw, this handset highlights a massive 6.9 inch display and that 6.9 inch display it has a full HD resolution which is a very welcome type of specification at this price point. It also has large 6GB of RAM, 1-8GB of storage, 48MP quad camera setup, 8MP selfie camera, and 7000 mAh battery as we mentioned earlier and that is the key feature of this device. So without any further ado, let's proceed with the unboxing. This is the packaging of the device. As you can see here, it has this blue Techno logo on top and here on the lower portion of its left part, you can see that it has the POVA branding and number 2 suggesting that this is the POVA 2. And below, as you can see here, the unit that we have has the polar silver colorway. We do not know yet if Techno will bring other color versions here. And the unit that we have has 1-3 gigs of storage and 6 gigabytes of RAM. This is important as it has 12 months plus 1 of warranty. Unlike most brands with only 12 months of warranty, so that is a pretty good sign here. And as you can see here, it reads that it has lithium-ion polymer battery, suggesting that the cell techno used here is a little bit higher end. So now let's open the box. So here, the first thing that we saw is the handset itself. And it shows here that it has the 7000 mAh battery, Helio J85 gaming processor, 6.9 inch display, and a 48 MP AI camera. So we will be removing the device there. So this is the phone itself. So wow, it is in this polar silver version and it feels nice. Let's talk more about it in a bit. And here, as we mentioned earlier, it has 12 months plus one of warranty. So maybe Techno is really trying to gain the trust of its customers. That's why they added one more month of warranty. And that is nice. And this one, this is the I am EI of the device so just skip it and then next is this this is the warranty card so again keep it and then this is nice as it has a free case included in the package so this is a TPU clear case with uh, transparent design and it looks nice and it feels nice in the hands as well and then we get this charger so this is not an ordinary charger. This is not your usual uh, 1 amp or 2 amps charger. This is an 18 watts fast charger. And that's important as this phone has a big 7,000 mAh battery. Personally, I would have liked it better if the charging is at least 22.5. But I'm good with 18 instead of 10. Then this is the last thing that you will see inside the box. It has this cable and for the first time on a budget device, Tecno is using a USB Type-C port and that is a reversible port that supports faster charging and faster file transfer rates. This is nice. And then, here, I think this is the earphones with mic. So it has an earphones with mic. And lastly, you will get this SIM ejector tool. Obviously, you will be using this to open the SIM card tray of the handset. Upon checking, the Techno Pova 2, it also has a pre-installed screen protector. So that is another plus. Just don't expect that all of the freebies included in this package are made out of super high quality materials. But they are decent and freebies are freebies. I'm not complaining. This is actually nice as you do not have to buy a case anymore and earphones anymore and a screen protector anymore unless you just want to upgrade to a tempered glass for better protection for its display 
for the building design in terms of materials used techno used plastic at the back plastic on the frame and glass in front that is understandable since this is a budget smartphone not a high-end smartphone don't expect to get frosted glass finishes at this price point but this is a pretty good type of material at the back especially that it is textured and it is not prone to fingerprint smudges and hairline scratches it can still be scratched since this is plastic if you will force it but for everyday scratches it won't be that noticeable or it will be a little bit harder to scratch compared to other type of glossier materials and look at the design the design is pretty unique it has this line here i'll be removing these stickers later so that we can see it better but obviously you get the idea this is not a bad looking phone at the back especially at this price point the camera island it is not that thick despite having large camera sensors uh, large portrait mp main shooter it's not that big it is pretty okay and it even has four led flashes that is very rare especially on budget smartphones i also like that it has a 3d curve finish so it feels nice in the hand just notice that it is big this is a big phone this is a huge phone since it has a massive display and it will be a little hard to hold with just one hand so we suggest holding it with two hands this is also a bit heavy at 185 grams that is due to its big battery capacity and the large display size of the device in front it is using a 2.5d curved glass it is 6.9 inch big with a 1080p resolution and here the bezels on the bottom part is a little bit bigger compared to its sides and top but that is understandable since this is a budget smartphone normally on more premium smartphones we expect slimmer shin guys this is priced at just 7,990 pesos and you get this center punch hole type of design that's nice Tecto Philippines didn't mention its exact screen to body ratio but we suspect that it is around the 89 to 90 percent since we find it to be a little bit more immersive than the usual budget phones with thicker shins and thicker bezels on top there's nothing at the bottom you will see that it has this usb type c reversible port and then you get this microphone hole here and 3.5 millimeter headphone jack slot but right you will see that it has this volume up and volume down keys also known as the volume rocker and it has this power key here that also acts as the fingerprint reader and as you just saw it unlocks the phone very fast and it is fairly accurate as well at left you will see that it has a pin hole so when you open it you will see that it has a triple slot tray and this is a very nice one as you can put two micro sim cards here i mean two nano sim cards and a micro sd slot by the way the dito sim card works on this handset as it has VOLTE connectivity looking at its sim card tray as you can see here there's no rubber gasket or red rubber ring to prevent water damage so be careful with this as it doesn't have water resistance similar to a lot of budget smartphones techno also failed to mention if its display has some sort of glass protection so be careful with it fortunately as mentioned earlier it has a pre-installed screen protection to prevent light scratches in case you're wondering the ear speaker of this device also acts as the front firing loudspeaker that you can use to listen to music and more overall this is a fairly nice looking device despite the few weak points that we mentioned earlier unlike most techno smartphones with lower resolution hd plus displays the Tecno Fubo 2 is equipped with a sharper and better 1080p LCD. Not only that, this is a 6.9 inch big panel allowing its users to enjoy content on a bigger display. This could be great for watching Netflix videos, YouTube clips, checking your social media account, viewing photos, and playing games of course. Similar to most smartphones with LCD panels, the Tecno Fubo 2 has a display with close to accurate colors even if its tone is on the slightly cooler side. Just don't expect it to have AMOLED deep blacks but for the price, this is more than acceptable. My minor gripe is the screen brightness level 
while it is a bit bright for indoor use, it will struggle a little when you go outside. On the display settings, it has plenty of options. You can switch to automatic brightness levels or manual. It also has this adaptive brightness function and the eye care mode which tints your screen to amber. This makes it easier to look at your screen and read in dim light. It may also help you fall asleep easier according to Tecno. And when you turn it on, it is a little bit easier on the eyes as well, especially if you are using your phone in the dark. Other settings for its display includes the option to turn on the dark theme or turn it off. It also has an option to keep the screen bright always. This could be helpful if you will go outside. And many more such as screen timeout, font size, auto rotate screen, lock screen, and many more. Tecno is also boasting that this device has 180Hz of touch sampling rate that is a pretty higher end type of touch sampling rate that is better for typing, swiping, and of course playing games. However, we noticed that it only has 5 points of multi-touch unlike other smartphones with 10. For audio, it has a single front firing speaker and that one is found above the top center punch hole camera of the device. It is actually the ear speaker as well. Now let's take a listen to this. Overall, despite being a single speaker setup, we find it to be loud and crisp at the same time. Distortion is also a bit less at max loudness. However, do not expect this to have the fullness of sound and the bass response found on higher end and bigger speakers. It isn't a stereo speaker setup as well, so sound stage will be narrower in general. For wired audio, it has a 3.5mm headphone jack slot at the bottom. We tried it and it can drive some of the headphones that we have here, the smaller ones. Just don't expect it to be high res as this is a lower end type of smartphone and that's understandable. As expected, it did pretty well for calls as its loudspeaker also acts as its ear speaker. We also tried this one for audio recording and we find its quality to be decent for the price. Just don't expect it to have noise cancelling since it isn't a higher end type of smartphone. Have a listen to this. We also tried this one for audio recording and we find its quality to be decent for the price. Just don't expect it to have noise cancelling since it isn't a higher end type of smartphone. For cameras, it has a total of 4 at the back. The primary shooter is a 48MP camera which is an upgrade coming from the 13 megapixel from the original POVA. Then it is paired with a 2 megapixel macro camera, a 2MP depth camera, and a 2MP AI camera. As you can notice at the back, it also has a quad LED flash. On paper, this is a fairly attractive camera configuration, but personally, I would have liked it so much better if Tecno used an ultra-wide shooter instead of a macro or depth camera. It would have made this device a more versatile shooter overall. For the camera interface, what Tecno uses is a fairly easy to understand interface with plenty of features. In particular, I like that it has this HDR toggle for auto HDR and it also has this LED flash function and you can switch to beauty, you can switch to portrait if you want and it has a super night mode. What's missing here is the manual mode, it doesn't have a dedicated pro mode for manual controls. but it has AI scene optimization which automatically detects uh, scenes and it adjusts parameters to deliver optimal photo quality according to Tecno. For me, it works as I was able to try it with different subjects when I was shooting using this device. What I like here is it has this eye detection like type of autofocus that ensures your subject will stay sharp most of the time. Looking at the camera samples, the 48 megapixel primary shooter of the Tecno Poba takes decent images, especially in daylight. Actually, it is pretty detailed even if you crop it. Because of that high-resolution primary camera, you can take detailed up to 2x digital zoom shots, 
we even noticed that it has better dynamic range compared to the primary camera shot that we showed earlier. However, we only suggest that you take up to two times digital zoom as anything above that will be blurrier with less details, especially this 10 times zoom mode example. The next camera, the Tecnopova 2, is a 2 megapixels f2.4 macro camera, and this camera will allow you to take super close up images like this. However, only use this mode if your lighting is sufficient as it won't perform that well if you are in a dimmer type of lighting situation. The next camera is a 2 megapixel depth sensor at f2.4 and this will help its primary camera take shots with deep looking background blur or what we call bokeh. It works, however, do not expect it to perform as good as other higher end type of smartphones as the background separation from this one is not that great. Edge detection sometimes fails as well. We also noticed that its 2 megapixel AI camera helped in making our food shots livelier. And as you can notice, it isn't oversaturated unlike other AI camera phones that we tested in the past. For indoor shots, as long as you have decent lighting, this could be good enough to take highly detailed product shots like this one. In low light, thanks to its 48 megapixel shooter with 4-in-1 pixel binning technology, it was able to take brighter than usual shots compared to other budget smartphones in the dark. It is just a little bit softer and grainier and the colors are a bit washed as well compared to our daylight shots. But Tecno has a solution for that and that is the night mode. With the help of its super night mode technology, you will be able to take shots with better exposure, truer colors, and nicer overall details compared to normal shots without the night mode. Just don't compare it with higher end phones with better camera systems as sometimes the shots from the Technopova in low light is a little bit over sharpened and there are times where it has this watercolor like effect. Don't get us wrong, we like this night mode and for us, this is one of the better night modes at this price point. In case night mode is not enough, you can always use its quad LED flash for close-up shots in the dark. You can even activate its AR mode for cute filters that you can use even for videos. Similar to the main camera, it has this AI cam mode and you can also activate the HDR, auto HDR or no HDR and choose if you want to use its dual LED flash. Also has this beauty mode and the portrait mode for bokeh selfie shots. To our surprise, the eye autofocus also works for selfies. Let's take a look at this. As expected, it takes natural looking images in daylight with crisp enough details especially for a budget smartphone. Since it is only using a single selfie camera, the bokeh effect for me is not that great. The edge detection is not the cleanest I've seen at this price point. The face beauty works as it can make your skin tone look brighter and smoother at the same time. The beauty effect is adjustable and it is up to you if you want to look unnatural or not. In low light, it will obviously struggle. My advice, use the flash of this device in front. For videos, the back cameras of this device has the ability to shoot up to 2K 30fps videos. It is decent in quality and details but expect it to be a bit shaky as it doesn't have EIS or OIS. It also takes good quality 1080p videos at 30fps in daylight. Although again, the shake is evident since there's no OIS or EIS for stabilization. To improve stabilization, you can use the ultra steady feature of the device but it only shoots up to 1080p. Using this function, shake is minimal. However, jitters and ghosting is visible. In front, it can also record up to 2K video selfies. In 2K mode, quality is crisp and field of view is a bit wider, but shake is evident. And as you can see here, it also has the ultra steady function up to 1080p. The 1080p ultra steady mode has cropped but stabilization is better. It even has this bokeh effect mode up to 720p. The background blur bokeh effect is cool but it is far from perfect. In terms of performance, the Technopova 2 is reasonably fast. This is thanks to its use of the 2.0 GHz 7nm Mitchetech Helio J85 Octa-Core processor with the Mali GPT-2 2EEMC2 1000MHz GPU. Uh, transitions are okay. 
animations are quite smooth and we never had an issue opening most of the basic apps like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Netflix, Gmail, the browser like Google Chrome and a few other apps that we normally use like Snapseed and etc. Thanks to its use of a large 6 GB of RAM, multitasking performance is also decent. And with its 128 expandable storage, we can store a lot of games, even the heavy ones like uh, Mobile Legends Bang Bang, Apex Legend, Call of Duty Mobile, Genshin Impact, and more. For gaming, we like that it has this game space mode with the ET engine that optimizes the overall performance of the phone while playing games. Basically, Techno's ET engine has memory acceleration, CPU boost, GPU boost, and network acceleration. It also has optimization for the game graphics to remove screen shape and picture enhancement that increases contrast, saturation, and etc. Also, of course, it has the do not disturb functions like message do not disturb that blocks reminders other than incoming calls and alarm and incoming call reject. It also has the performance enhancer that predict high CPU usage due to frame drop and lag. Color inversion is also available for PUBG Mobile. Thanks to this, we never had an issue running Mobile Legends Bang Bang even at high settings with high refresh rate mode. Ultra is not available but that is understandable since this is a budget smartphone but at least it can play this game without lag or frame drops that is noticeable at all. For Call of Duty Mobile, I was able to run the game effortlessly at medium graphics settings with high frame rate. It also has depth of field and real-time shadows. Unfortunately, other settings like Ragal, Anti-Aliasing, Water Reflection, Bloom, and high graphic quality is not available but that's okay as long as I can play the game smoothly without any hiccups. For ultra heavy games like Genshin Impact, running it at low settings is what will I recommend. Actually even at low settings there are times where we experience frame drops but that is understandable since this is a budget smartphone. I will be mad if this device will lag if it is priced in the 20k range. But under 10,000, especially at 7,990 pesos, I am happy that Genshin is a little playable. What's impressive about this device is even if there is no mention of a cooling system, it didn't get alarmingly hot. Actually, it is just warm even after playing for quite some time. That is impressive as this is not a thick device at just 9.62mm and it has a massive 7000mAh battery. Normally, it should get hot because they cramp up all of those components inside but thankfully, this one is quite okay in terms of thermals, especially at this price point. For connectivity, we never had an issue with its Wi-Fi. The signal strength is always strong even if I go up here in our house. And we also noticed that 4G LTE is working pretty well considering that signal in our area is not that strong. It even has VO LTE and that is a huge plus especially if you are using the new Dito SIM. Compared to other budget smartphones, the signal strength that I am getting on the Tecno Pova 2 is respectable at 3 bars. At least it is not 2 bars. Only my higher end smartphones with a price tag of 20k and above have a higher signal strength than this one. We also tested the hotspot of this device and it works and we tried its Bluetooth connectivity as well and it is pretty stable in general. This device it also has GPS and a GPS, and we find them to be fairly accurate at times. And the other thing that we like here is the use of a wireless FM radio. As you can see here, I can use it to play some music even if I don't have an antenna via the 3.5mm headphone jack. This is a huge plus. Now to the main highlight of the handset, the battery capacity. Again, it is equipped with a 7000mAh battery capacity and it is the largest battery capacity that you will ever see among all the smartphones at this price point. Actually, regardless of price, it has the biggest battery capacity in the country along with the Samsung M-series phone in the 20k range. But that is two times more expensive than this phone. For the battery performance, it recorded 21 hours and 45 minutes using the 
PC Mark Work 3.0 Battery Life Test. And this is actually not the highest score that we ever got. But considering that the display of this is 6.9 inch big, this score is considered as very good. And after running that rigorous battery test, I used YouTube for 1 hour and 26 minutes before it dropped to 2% of battery life. And as you can see here, it reads that I can still use the device for around 50 minutes even if my battery capacity is only 2%. For actual usage, this can easily last for around 2-3 to three days on a single charge for moderate users. And for gamers, you are surely in for a treat as this can last longer than the usual phones with 5000mAh battery found at this price point. For charging, this one supports up to 18 watts of dual IC plus charge via USB Type-C. Based on our experience, 30 minutes of charge is equal to 22% of battery life. If you want to full charge the phone, you will need around 3 hours from 0 to 100%. For charging in general, 3 hours is considered as long. But this one has a massive 7000 mAh battery. Obviously, it will charge longer than your 5000 mAh smartphone. And for a device with a 7000 mAh battery, 3 hours is not bad. For software, this is one of the few handsets under 10,000 pesos running on Android 11 OS. It is using the HiOS 7.6.0 skin that is based on this new operating system. And Compared to the other HiOS skins that we tested in the past, I think Tecmo improved this so much. And coming from older HiOS skins, this is smoother and more refined. Moreover, it looks prettier in general as well. Versus its predecessors, it has a massive improvement in terms of smoothness and speed on the skin. However, ads are still present as you can see here and look at this. It even has this featured games that you might or you might not need at all. Also, it has a few bloatwares. Fortunately, most of them can be removed. What I like here is it has most of the functions that you will see on most modern Android skins. For example, it has this phone booster to keep the performance of your device optimized. And then, I also noticed that it has this a game space mode like what I showed you earlier for a better gameplay experience and it also has a new feature like this peak proof mode that blurs some parts of your display so you can only show the part of the screen that you want to show so those who wanted to peek at your phone will have a hard time looking at the other parts of your display it even has this tap alert so that an alert will be triggered when charging is interrupted and it can be stopped by unlocking the device. Going back to the battery, we also notice that it has this safe charging feature that auto disconnects the device while fully charged to protect the battery further. So far, this is way better than the previous higher skins. My only gripe are the ads that are occasionally popping up on the search and sometimes in the notifications of the device. I'm still looking for a way to turn that off but I'm sure there is a way. Pros and cons. Verdict. Without a doubt, the Tecno Pobo 2 is one of the most attractive phones at this price point today. Priced at just 7,890 pesos, the Tecno Pobo 2 boasts a modern looking design, a massive display with a crisp 1080p resolution, the biggest battery capacity at this price point despite having a slim body, and a capable primary shooter. We also like that it has an improved and smoother looking user interface. It may not have the highest end available chip under 10,000 pesos. You may see some ads popping out occasionally and there is no ultra wide shooter but Tecno makes up for it with its long lasting battery life and big display with sharp resolution. Besides, the Helio G85 chipset that it is using is still above average in terms of speed in its class. So would we recommend it? The answer is yes if you need a handset with a big display, reasonably fast speed, and strong battery performance. 
To those who are wondering, the Techno Puba 2 is now available in Shopee with a free Mobile Legends game skin plus a wireless Bluetooth earphones with microphone. At Lazada, buyers will get a free Mobile Legends game skin plus a wireless earphones. There is also a limited pre-sale offer at Mema Express Online, Kim Store Online, Techno Mobile Concept Store at SM North Edsa Annex, and the Techno Mobile Kiosk at Ayala Market Market. In those stores, the handset will come with a free Mobile Legends game skin and other special dealer freebies. So, what do you guys think? Again, this is Peter of thisguy.com and this is our Techno Poba 2 review. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe always. Bye-bye!